Hi guys and welcome to episode 9.1 of the data series. The focus on this episode will be on support vector machines. So what are support vector machines? They are a set of supervised machine learning algorithms used in both regression and classification problems, as well as detecting outliers in data. They are, however, most commonly used for classification problems, which will be the focus for this video. The job of a support vector machine for classification problems is to take label data such as the following. So here we have two labels, class A and class B, and we determine a hyperplane that separates the data. We can then use this hyperplane to make predictions for which class a new data point belongs to. So here, the new observation lies above the hyperplane, so we predict it belongs to class A, and if it were to lie below, so for example here, we would predict it belongs to class B. As mentioned before, in this episode we will be focusing on linearly separable support vector machines. The difference between linearly separable and non-linearly separable data is illustrated here. So for linearly separable data, we can draw a straight line that separates the data quite well, and for non-linearly separable data, we can't draw a straight line that separates the data well. So before we go on to see the general method of calculating the hyperplane, we must first be aware of some support vector machine terminology. So first, the hyperplane, which can be thought of as a decision boundary used to separate and classify data. So one thing to note is that in two-dimensional space, so for example, in our example here, we have two features, say x1 and x2, our hyperplane will be one-dimensional, so it's just a straight line. So in three-dimensional space, so let's say for example, we also had another axis here, and another feature, let's say x3, our hyperplane will then become a plane. So it will become two-dimensional. So in general, a hyperplane is n minus one dimensions, where n is our number of features. Another important terminology is support vectors. And these are vectors or points that are closest to our hyperplane from each class. If these vectors were to be removed, the position of our hyperplane may change. So we can imagine, for example, if this point was removed, our hyperplane may shift slightly this way. There is also the margin, which is the distance our hyperplane is away to the closest vector. So in this case, the hyperplane is at the midpoint of the two support vectors here and here. So the margin values are the same. So this margin here will be the same as this margin here. Take a look at the following three hyperplanes separating our data. So which hyperplane do you think separates our data the best? So we choose the hyperplane that separates our data most. This is given by the hyperplane with the largest margin. So in this case, the hyperplane shown in image one is optimal. So the equation of our hyperplane takes the following formula. G of x equals W transpose x plus B. So here, W is a vector of weights or parameters and B is our bias and we have X as our input vector. So with two features, X1 and X2, our hyperplane would have the following formula, W1 X1 plus W2 X2 plus B. So we're now going to label every data point that belongs in class A as Y equals one and every data point that belongs in class B as Y equals minus one. So now essentially what we want our hyperplane to do is to predict a value of y equals one if any data point lies beyond this margin here and predict a value of y equals minus one if any data point lies beyond this margin here. So essentially what we want is that our hyperplane outputs a value bigger than or equal to one if our data point xi belongs to class A that is yi equals to one. And for our hyperplane to output a value less than or equal to minus one, if our data point xi belongs into class B, that is yi equals to minus one. So these two inequalities here can be combined into one. And this works since if we were to take yi equals to one and put it into here, then we get our inequality here. And if yi equals to minus one, we have minus w transpose xi plus b is bigger than or equal to one, which is the same as w transpose xi plus b is smaller than or equal to minus one, which is this inequality here. So for both cases, yi equals to one and yi equals to minus one can be encaptured in this single inequality here. 
So the distance between our support vector here and our hyperplane, also known as the margin, can be calculated using the formula, giving us a value of 1 divided by the norm of our weight vector. And we can do the same for the other margin, again giving us a value of 1 divided by the norm of our weight vector. So our total margin is therefore given by these two values added up, giving a value of 2 over the norm of our weight vector. So as mentioned before, we want to maximize our total margin to give the best hyperplane that separates our data. And we maximize this total margin by minimizing this value here, the norm of our weight vector. So here we're left with a nonlinear programming problem and we square the value in which we wish to minimize, and multiply it by a half in order to make the minimization problem easier. And we minimize this whilst adhering to the condition which we calculated earlier. So I won't go into too much detail about nonlinear programming as this can be quite mathematically demanding, but I'll leave a link in the description where you guys can read more about this. So this minimization problem can be solved using karish kentucky conditions, which gives rise to the following conditions. So here, M is given as our number of training examples and lambda i as our Lagrangian multiplier, yi as our labels, and xi as our data points. So we use these conditions here to obtain optimal values for w and b given training data x and labels y, which gives us the equation of the hyperplane with the largest margin as required. If you guys are interested in how these conditions are used to find our values of w and b for our hyperplane, please take a look at the link in the description. So in summary, support vector machines are a set of supervised machine learning algorithms commonly used in classification problems. SVMs are used on linearly separable and non-linearly separable data. And the focus of this episode was on linearly separable data. SVMs work by calculating a hyperplane given by the following equation, which separates our data with the largest margin. This is done using an optimization technique called nonlinear programming. We then use this hyperplane as a decision boundary to classify data into groups. Thank you guys very much for watching and I hope you learned something new.